In turnovers committed per game last year in 21-22 during the 82-game regular season, the Warriors were the second-worst NBA team, only behind the Houston Rockets. They would of course still end up winning the championship. This year in 22-23, at the All-Star break, Golden State is again only better than the 30th ranked Houston Rockets in terms of turnovers committed. That said, this team hasn't developed the winning habits that they did throughout the course of last year where they'd finish 24 games over 500. This season for the four-time champs over the last eight years, through 57 grueling games filled with drama, injuries, and active front office work, including a recent trade for Gary Payton II, which I have an entire video about releasing soon. It was just interrupted by the trade initially not going through, but about to face a tough Clippers team on the road on the second night of a back-to-back -back in the City of Angels, and obviously with their best player in Steph sidelined for a second stretch this year, there's no time for this Dubs team to lose their focus. That said, even without Steph, when this team is drilled in on said focus, we've seen how this top of the league level offensive system can flow. To put the reigning champs back above 500, which they've been teetering back and forth on all year, in a modern day offensively dominated battle with the team from the nation's capital, Clay dropped 29 and posterized Chris Dapps Porzingis, Thompson is about to suit up for his first back-to-back -back of the season, and that's a seemingly knock-on-wood safe decision from Kerr, considering how much momentum this stride to the basket gathered following a backdoor cut. A Kerr-drawn-up play after a timeout with four minutes left in the game was maybe Clay's biggest triple on the night. This innovative three-down action drawn up by Kerr was the type of off-ball screening action that got Clay open triples all night. Monday night was also headlined by the elite post footwork from Andrew Wiggins, who all around bounced back in a major way. The Warrior offense was flowing perfectly to help get Wiggins clean catches and isos. From there, watch this two dribble step through pivot into the lane for the nasty fader. This pop four type action sees Wiggs act as the four and Dre act as the two. Wiggs set the cross screen and pop out to the left corner for the clean spot up triple. Next, great Ty Jerome flair on the back side right here, but what gets this done is an outstanding catch on the entry first, and then a big body drifting back two dribble beasting on Brad Beal on the inside for the bucket. Big body pin and screen which the Warriors offense loves to run, set by Jermichael, sees Wiggs pop out on an elusive angle and nicely follow through from 25 plus feet. More post up magic though from Air Canada. Here he goes face up, wide jab, exact same wide jab again, hits him with a two dribble hezzy, slight drive entry, another hezzy before leveraging off his right pivot, gravity which draws the attention of KP, Wiggins finds Jermichael on the kick out, and Green's gonna copy Wiggs by jab stepping himself before draining this shot. Former Denver Nugget Jermichael Green, to quote Shaq, many wouldn't be familiar with his game but he's been absolutely outstanding in the month of February for this Golden State team. Man's averaging a very solid 10 points per game on incredible efficiency. Just like another first year warrior in DiVincenzo, Jamichael may have made some slight changes to his release. He seems to be getting a lot more legs into his shot, which is very important of course, and everything for Green just looks smoother, of course not to jinx him. Maybe it's just him getting fully accustomed to this powerhouse dub system, of course has its fair share of amenities. The world is Jamichael's with all the spacing this system and personnel for Golden State provides. Even if he's not hitting shots, I think solid entry passes followed by flare screens to form split actions like this one from Green, or just him making the right reads in high-low action are also productive ways he can contribute. Going back to Wiggs, and if my fellow Torontonian continues to show up like the relentless, upbeat, and engaged version of himself that we saw from 2022's finals, plus finds a genuine, driving, motivating factor. The former number one pick and all-star starter putting the GTA on the map makes Golden State a powerhouse yet again. Let's face it, Wiggins, like all of these guys going through yet another potential championship run, are now feeling the brunt of exhaustion after achieving the ultimate glory mere months ago. You can claim the dubs are hungover from that run last year or argue against that, 
but it's undeniable that fatigue comes into play when factoring in they had less rest last offseason than any team other than the much younger Boston Celtics, of course. Most recently, though, Kevon Looney's post-scoring against Washington was exceptional and timely. Kevon Luajuwon is a 15-10 and 10 guy at the very least on any other squad, and needs to be recognized more for what he contributes to this system. Kevon's passing is fundamental, whether that comes in the form of straight-up dimes or hockey assists. His ability to bail Golden State out as well with his mere strength down low, despite being undersized for a center at 6'9", then being able to extend over the top after big bodying his matchup out of the way with his 7'4 wingspan, continues to get shamefully undermentioned. Are the numbers from Kavon sexy? Not at all, but he's a glue guy in the locker room. He's egoless regarding his ability to adapt back and forth from the starting five to the bench, and as we saw against DC, he can take over for you offensively when you need him to, that is. Kavon is truly a franchise staple in every sense of the phrase. Another fundamental attribute to Golden State's success that I want to get into is Draymond's communication, awareness, and one-on-one -on -one ability defensively. Here, Dre's going to switch from Morris onto Porzingis, and just as KP rolls, try to key in on the slight motioning from Draymond to direct traffic, signaling to Wiggs and DiVincenzo that he doesn't need help. Then he sticks with Porzingis and shuts down the inadvertently attempted ISO. Moving on, and the vibes in the locker room, and visibly from the bench where Steph and Gary have become the two biggest fans of this team, are evidently on point right now. As I've mentioned, I've got a video yet to be released but essentially completed on the arrival of GP2, but it's not only the young glove joining that has this locker room in good shape, it's Draymond's voice being able to shine through with time healing all wounds after what happened in the preseason. Ty Jerome said the bench made their run last night after Draymond got into them on the sidelines, so Green's voice is clearly starting to be a focal point again that's massive for this team. The second half of the Splash Brothers in Clay Thompson is about to play the first second half of a back-to-back -back for nearly half a decade if I'm not mistaken. In the month of February, Thompson's been lighting it up in timely fashion without Chef. Clay's made the same amount of threes as Damian Lillard this month on a better percentage and in less games. Speaking on Clay's dunk, backcourt running mate Dante DiVincenzo claimed his poster against Portland was better than Clay's, and rightfully so. That was quite the Kodak moment from the springy point guard out of Villanova. After the Washington game, DiVincenzo spoke on changing his release, which led him to make five of his eight triples on the night and is leading him to make a career-high 41.4% of his threes on the season as a whole. DiVincenzo said he made a small hand placement tweak to his form. That slight changeup, I think, is something a lot of players can learn from. I know they say to not change what got you there, but nothing wrong with a slight tweak, in my opinion at least. It's insane that Bucks fans were calling Dante merely an average player due to the fact that they won the title when he missed the playoffs in 2021. But DiVincenzo's proving those unnecessarily salty Buck fans for that take wrong. Moses Moody, meanwhile, got some well-deserved minutes as now that Wise is gone, Steve Kerr has no choice but to give Moses minutes, right? In all seriousness, though, Moody's had his rough moments in year two, but he continues to be a professional on and off the court and anything but a nuisance to this team's chemistry. Against the Wiz, Moody was a plus 11 in eight minutes played, tied with Kevon Looney and only behind Ty Jerome and Andrew Wiggins for a team third best in plus minus. You can't forget about when Jordan Poole split this double team, fell over yet still racked up the assist of the night, diving out while batting it to Wiggs. My GJP just needs to keep trust in the routine and process, go with the programming, go with the flow, whatever cliche you want to use. Most importantly, man's got to keep attacking downhill like he's been doing a lot better of as of late and display the proper body language leadership-wise. At the All-Star break, what do you want to see the dubs improve on? Best answer down below in the comments gets next video shout out. Community Speaks winner for today is Kosh Mando, who says, as a Celtics fan, I'd say my greatest concern is the reliance on the three ball for our offense. Would like to see a little bit more drive into the hoop from each ball handler. Thanks for watching. Have a good one.